All right, I hope to compete in international checkers at the next computer Olympiad. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to meet in person because this year we did it virtually and there were too many irregularities that I only got to I only got to one game, the dots and boxes. I did okay, but uh, I was a little disappointed. I had written 19 games in memory of everybody we lost to COVID-19, and so I was disappointed that I didn't get to compete in them because we couldn't get everybody coordinated together. We had different time zones, and uh, there were some software problems. Uh, but... Here's, this is some one of my opponents who has a public version online. This is mine right here. And some highlights of my program, which I'm still working on, is that I solved all of the positions with six or fewer pieces. I hope to do uh, seven or fewer before the tournament. So there's about... 65 billion positions with six or fewer pieces, if I remember correctly. Now then, on top of that, we can then do machine learning. Oh, it's already almost solved it as a draw. Uh, let's see, where did we move? So basically, it takes the position as a series of 50 different integers, right? Actually, 50 times four, right? Because there's four different kinds of pieces, white, black, uh, pawn, or king. So 200, a vector of 200 zeros and ones, right? Depending on if the piece is at a certain position. And it's trying to find a function that maps that to the value of the position, right? What What is the likelihood of my winning, right? So it's trying to learn a mathematical function uh, using calculus, right? You're doing a gradient descent uh, where you're trying to find the best fit to that function and you get an evaluation function. And once you have a way to evaluate positions of the board, then you can search, right? If I do this out of the possible moves I have, my opponent can do that and so on and so forth. You're trying to maximize your score, your opponent's trying to minimize your score. 18 and 9. And um, you're finding the move that, that maximizes your expected score. There are enhancements to that algorithm that's called Minimax, by the way. There are enhancements to it, like you can find positions where it's provable that all of the moves lead to uh, something worse than what you already have, right? That's called alpha beta pruning. And alpha beta pruning works best if you choose your best move first, right? Obviously, you don't know it, right? So there are heuristics so that you're choosing the best move first more often than not, right? Uh, now... Some things that could influence things are obviously uh, that could make or break the torn uh, the 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 program are your search algorithm and also the actual machine learned function, right? So then the architecture of the neural network. My intuition tells me that the architecture of the neural network is probably going to be the bigger deciding factor. Okay. Yeah, I, I used to lose pretty badly to this program. So seeing a draw is a good side. Checkers is generally a drawish game or, uh, between experts. So it's relatively uncommon for one side to win. Now, I, I also hope to do some of the variations of checkers. So, uh, one of my favorite, or well, two of my favorite, there's a hex dame, 
which is just like international checkers but played on a hexagonal board and then there's cheskers which is a variation that combines chess with checkers uh, so in cheskers uh, the goal is to uh, capture the king uh, but uh, the pieces move like checkers and you can promote other pieces to kings and then there's knights and bishops that move just like their chess counterparts uh, I wish I had some opponents for some of these other variations though I think every variation brings about new challenges to the machine learning function that's why I love doing them but unfortunately no opponents Another one I might think about is there are checkers variations where your pieces can stack on top of one another and it influences how they move. This one I find very challenging for machine learning because the number of combinations and thus variables in the machine learned function explode very fast, right? 23 to 14. I'm actually going to play this round out because earlier this week I had a bug in my program where my program thought it was going to draw but then it made the wrong move so hopefully it won't do that this time. So this variation called Laska, let's see. Major difference between Alaska and other drafts variants is that instead of pieces being removed from the board when they are jumped, they are placed under the piece that jumped them, forming a column. A column is under the control of the player whose piece is on top, and the move and jump capabilities of that piece. Okay, if a column is itself jumped, only the top piece is removed to go under the column. Uh, so you can see the number of combinations for a column can explode exponentially as it gets higher. My, my, my intuition says that machine learning isn't going to do too well. The traditional neural networks aren't going to do too well on Laska because I recently wrote uh, some machine learning for some card games. And... Uh, you got a game like bridge you got to account for the what the other opponents are doing the cards they discard could give you a hint as to what they might be holding right and the number of combinations of orders of when the cards were discarded also explodes exponentially and uh, the neural networks did not do too well there so my intuition says that uh we need some kind of other approach right i'm thinking because your pieces are stacking it's like a three-dimensional image right some kind of uh machine learning that can operate in three dimensions would probably be a better way or at least uh a way that i don't think anybody has tried for any of these games right so we'll see how that turns. see i I bet my program made a bad move somewhere because it's claiming it's losing by a big margin. Let's make sure we even have the same position. That's always terrifying during the tournament that we look at our boards and the two sides have different positions because somebody misentered a move at one point. I'm so glad 
we had, oh good, it's going back to a draw, so that was a very transient state. Uh, I'm so glad we had the quarantine. I mean, it, yes, there are sad things that happened last year, don't don't get me wrong, but it was a good chance for me to, uh, to uh, have a different frame of mind for writing these computer games. Um, sometimes your ideas get stuck in a rut somewhere, and when things get shaken up, right, whether it be a quarantine, or a, a, a personal tragedy, right? Maybe a, a death in the family, or maybe even yourself getting sick, right? Uh, I, I was uh, ill with the cold uh, a few weeks ago. Hopefully, it was the cold. I, I didn't get tested, so I don't know. But during that time, it made me think about things that kind of um, uh, slid through the cracks in terms of ideas, right? And. Um, that's what I want people to see it as, right? The, the, the crisis and opportunity tend to hold hands with each other, right? It depends on what you want to view it as. Yeah, my, my evaluation function tends to go haywire at the end where it claims it's winning or losing by a big margin and then it comes back to a draw. I don't I don't know if that's an artifact of the machine learning function that I used or if it's a, a bug somewhere. I gotta investigate that a little bit more, but uh, the uh, I mean the machine learning of is still running. I mean it it it, it it's uh, you know they say it takes 10,000 hours to, to get, become an expert at something. Some of my machine learning algorithms have been running for a lot long, longer than 10,000 machine hours, right? And uh, they're still not experts, right? So you would imagine for a human it might take even more, right? Uh, I won my first gold medal at the Computer Olympiad after dedicating about 3,000 hours to the games. But to be fair, uh, other things that I've worked on in my life have, have also been in the same genre, right? So, uh, I'll let you decide how many hours that was. So how many pieces we got on the board? Six versus six. And remember, when there's a total of six or fewer pieces, my algorithm knows exactly the value of the... Uh, I have an end game table base that will tell us the value of the position. Let's play a few more moves just to make sure. So it's searching all the way down to when there's only six pieces total, so it knows that it's a draw. I'm pleased to at least draw against this program. This is, I think, the fifth time I've, I've every time I've played against it, I've drawn. So I'm pleased at that because I used to lose pretty badly to this program, and usually it's a very subtle mistake that I make. So uh, I, I I didn't use machine learning until this year. So in the past I did. Uh, oh, I did machine learning, but a different kind. What I did was patterns of the board, right? Every, I believe, six by six 